Hi there, this is CSD Math 8, Unit 5, Lesson 4, looking at your homework packet here today. And again, um, as always, our first question is part of our cool down to see did you get your lesson or not. So I won't do all of it, but this one here is one I can't change the numbers on too much, so I'm going to talk through it with you to help you get it and make sure you understand what to do. Because sometimes we get just tricked up on the words. What are they asking you to do? So it says, here is the graph of a function showing the amount of money remaining on a subway fare, a subway fare card as a function of the number of rides taken. So looking at the amount of money remaining as a function of as a function of the number of rides taken. So the amount of money we can see here on this section here, so this is our dollars right there. Okay. And we can see the number of rides here. The amount of money this person has on the card starts at $45, right? And we can see it decreasing with the number of rides until it gets down to zero dollars here right so after it looks like 18 rides how much money is left on that card well we'd say there's nothing left it started here that's our dollar amount and the dollar amount is going to decrease the more times you use the card right makes sense the more time you use a card the less money you have so the money remaining is a function of the number of rides or we could say the money that you have depends on how many rides you take right so money depends on ride number. Okay, so the money you have depends on the ride numbers. So let's look at the questions here. What is the output of the function when the input is 10? Okay, so the input, if you remember, is always our independent variable. Okay, that's what we're putting into the system. Okay, as we're putting in, we talked before about our input was over here, that was our thing, and we put it into the rule, and that gave us our output there. Now, we talked before independent and dependent. This was our independent variable, and this one was our dependent variable. The dependent variable is a function of, so function of this one here. So in our case, our dollars is our dependent, right? The dollars we have left depends upon the number of rides. So our input here is 10. So our input that we want to look for is going to be in the ride section. So we're going to want to look at 10 and see what happens to our dollar amount when we have 10 rides. That's what we're looking for there and we're looking for a coordinate. Remember, coordinate is an x, comma, y value, like so. Question B says, what is the input to the function when the output is 5? Now, again, the output is going to be over here. That's our money amount. So we're going to look for the output being 5. That's our output. Okay, this is our output. And this is our input. And we want to see, okay, if the output is 5, then where are we when it comes to the the number of rides? Where do those line up at there? Because you can see at point C, question C says, what does point P tell you about? And we can see that point P is a certain point in time where you've had a certain number of rides and a certain number of dollars left in the card happen at that point. It's like your system's equation. It's a solution. Where do those come together at? And so just like P is a point, you're going to have a point for question A and a point for question B related to the input at 10 and then the output at 5. So go ahead and solve that there and see what you can figure out, kind of talking it through for you. All right, number two. It says the amount that Diego earns at his part-time jobs is proportional to the number of hours he works. He earns $10 an hour, okay, meaning this. The amount of money that he makes depends on the number of hours that he works, and every hour that he works, he makes $10, right? So the amount of money he makes is going to depend upon how many hours he works. That's our dependent variable, independent variable, and that's our dependent, okay? So this becomes our x, and that becomes our y. Write an equation in the form of y equals kx to describe a situation. Now the reason they're saying k is they want you to know that it is a proportional value, meaning it's not going to change over time. All right, so x is going to be the hours that he works, which we have right there, and y is a dollar he earns, which we have there. 
So just like we had before, we had the dollar he earns equals how much money he earns for every hour. To write it with X and Y's, we would say that Y equals 10 times X, okay? So the amount of money he earns depends on the number of hours he works times $10. So is y a function of x? So we're questioning here is does y, the amount he makes, so we're asking, does the amount he makes depend on the number of hours he works? That's what we're asking when we're saying, is y a function of x? Because the amount he makes is the y, and the number of hours is the x. So is this value dependent upon what that value is going to be? That's what's asking you. I'm not answering that for you. I'm just saying that's what's asking you. If we change x, does it change the result for y? That's what it wants to know, yes or no, and explain how you know that. All right, write an equation describing x as a function of y. And it says the hint, rearrange your equation to solve for x. All right, so that means it's look like this. We said that y equals 10x. So if we want to get x by itself, what will we do? We divide both sides by 10, okay? So that reduces there. So we're left with y over 10, or we could say 1 10 y equals x. You might think y 1 10. Well, dividing by 10, remember, is the same as divide to divide by 10 is the same as multiply by 1 10. So if I multiply this by 1 10, I'd multiply this by 1 10, and that's how you get y to 1 10. So that's what we're looking for right there. All right, number three. Last one for today. Use the equation m plus 3n equals 6 to complete the table, then graph using n as the dependent variable, All right? Okay, so this becomes our y and our x, All right? This is our n over here. This is our m over there. Okay, so let's just put these numbers in. We have when m is 0, 0 plus 3n equals 6. So that becomes nothing. So we divide both sides by 3. And n equals 6 divided by 3 is 2. So when m is 0, n has a value of 2. And that's our first point. So 0, and then y, n becomes 2. We can put that right there. On the next one, we have a value for n and not m. So we'll say m plus 3 times, and the value there is negative 1. 3 times negative 1 equals 6. So m and 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 equals 6. We'll add 3 to both sides. And we see that m equals 9. So when m equals 9, n is at negative 1. So let's find m is at 9 and n at negative 1 is right there. So we have two points. Let's do one more together. We have m at negative 3, so we could say when m is negative 3, we would say negative 3 plus 3n equals 6. All right, using the same equation, that's our m plus 3n equals 6, plugging negative 3 in for m. So we'll add 3 to both sides, so 3n equals 9. Divide both sides by 3, and n equals 3. So at negative 3, when m is negative 3, the value of n is going to be positive 3. 1, 2, 3. So we have a point right there. There's two more here for you to solve. I'll leave those for you to solve. And then when you're done, you'll get your ruler out, and you'll draw a line a lot nicer than mine, okay, to finish up your graph. That's it for today. Have a great day, and we will see you next time.